Hello. Welcome to another day. It took a couple of days off here and there. Uh, really because I've been very sleepy for some reason. Um, I know what it has to do with it though. So I can't say for some reason. But I have not been able to get myself up for some reason. And it's because my schedule is so odd that I have trouble sometimes getting enough sleep so that when it's time to get up to do these videos, I have the energy to. <laughs> but here I am again. So, if you, um, well, it's only happened once so far, but on this channel, on this video series, we have daily giveaways for $5 Amazon gift cards. Now there's more to it, but the rules will be listed in the description. So I'll give you just the basics. In order to participate, you have to be a subscriber, you have to like the video, and you have to answer the trivia question, which I am about to ask you. Now I will give you the answer later in the video at some point, but you must, you must like the video and be subscribe, a subscriber in order to win. Ready for today's trivia question? Here it is. <laughs> Who wrote the original lyrics for the Star Spangled Banner? And what was the Star Spangled, Star Spangled Banner originally known as under those lyrics? Think about that for a while. You can obviously go and search it and probably find it. Or you can wait around, get some cardio with me. And you'll find out later. So, I've had another idea for a short film based on a recent experience and I won't delve into too many details of that experience right now but let's just talk about making sure that the people you spend time with are going to treat you with respect. It's easy for people to have friendships with people who degrade them or don't believe that they will be successful and sort of laugh off their success. You don't want to surround yourself with people who have negativity because they will always drag you down. And usually, it's not necessarily an intentional thing. It's very subconscious in most cases. There are cases where it's intentional, but they do it because it's very lonely at the bottom in a lot of ways. And when people see someone rising above, it could cause jealousy and insecurity about themselves and so they will try to drag you down by saying things like hey that never happens to people like us or you just don't have what it takes those are the people you should not listen to on that who are people you should listen to well really the answer is no one if you have a dream that you want to pursue and it's not because people don't have value in their statements but it's because when you have someone who, when you're someone who has a dream of something you want to accomplish, whether it's being an astronaut, 
or running in the Olympics, being a movie star, whatever that may be. It's sometimes people feel like they have to protect you from being disappointed. That's one kind of person. Because they feel like it doesn't happen to people like you from where you're from. There's some people who don't want you to get ahead of them in life. And most of the time, subconsciously, they will not want you to achieve because they haven't. And the fascinating type of people are the people who tell you how you should do things when they've never done it. Well, no. If I was going to be president, this is how I would do it. If I was president, I would do this. Everybody has that opinion. Well, if it were me, I would do this. Yes, but it's not you. You don't have things you have to... You don't understand the rigors of campaigning, for example. If it's the president, you don't have understand the rigors of all the people that you have to satisfy who will never agree with each other. So what you try to do is find some kind of common ground. Now what it does not mean is that you have to be corrupt or become a liar to people. You can still be honest with people and still achieve goals. And you don't have to be in a perfect place in life. You don't have to be, you could be poor, you could be disabled, you could be a certain ethnicity, you could be from a certain country and still succeed at things. The limits that you set, or that we all set, are only created by us. Other people do not, do not create our limits. And what I mean by that is, if someone tells you, well, people like us never make it that far. Best we can hope for is a job, work, be able to pay our bills, make it to Social Security when we retire, we get old enough, and live as happily as we can. Well, if you accept that, then you've put the limitation on yourself. They just gave you their perspective. The decision to succeed and to push forward is yours. I do want to take this moment uh, really quickly uh, to uh, congratulate the first winner of the Cardio Vlogs Amazon gift card giveaway. A young man named Ronald Got Jokes, RGJ. I will put his um, the link to his YouTube channel in the comments below. And you should check out his channel. Um, I got to very briefly go to his channel. He's made some videos and uh, that's great. I'm always a big supporter of people who make videos, especially if it's something that they're passionate about. So congratulations, Ron, if that's your real first name or it's just the name you chose. Uh, congratulations. And thank you for playing. Thank you for being a subscriber. I appreciate it very much. There's also someone I'd like to take a, mention, a moment to mention who passed away um, a couple of days ago. A very successful YouTuber uh, named Glenn Webb. Glenn Webb uh, was an action figure and collectibles YouTuber. Uh, he was big on uh, a lot of the DC and Marvel characters, as well as WWE action figures and other things I'm not as familiar with. Uh, but, because I don't collect a lot of those. But I know he was very big in that area of collectibles action figures. And Glenn passed away in his sleep a couple of days ago. Uh, just after he passed 100,000 subscribers. Which, there's also something really haunting about it because the way YouTube works is you can schedule uploads 
and he scheduled an upload for the day that he passed away. Having some people leaving some people wondering whether he really had died or not, if it was just sort of a hoax. But you can schedule uploads. So even if you happen to be in a car accident or pass away or whatever, or something happens, there is, or just life in general, whether you die or not, if you scheduled an upload, then it can go up whenever you assigned it. And that way you kind of keep consistency with your audience. So very sad that he passed away, um, especially for those who knew him. I'm sad in the sense that this man was apparently very, very passionate about his uh, hobby or even his life. That's what he committed himself to, to action figures and collectibles. I, there was so much joy in the videos that I saw of his that it always makes you sad when someone with that kind of passion uh, goes away. That could really be an inspiration to people, whether you're, you know, into that hobby or passion, or if you have another one. Because it just shows you that anyone can do anything if they're passionate and work hard at it. You just have to put in the effort. And that sort of leads back to my starting conversation, which is you can listen to the doubt from other people and choose to adopt it for yourself. Or you can follow things that inspire you whether it's the same passion you have or not, sometimes just seeing someone who demonstrates an energy and a consistency and an effort to achieve their goals. In Glenn's case, it was to share his love of action figures and such. Let's just call it collectibles because there was a lot of things that were collectible. Collectibles. He shared that. And he was pretty darn close, if he wasn't already, to making a career out of it. Because when you get into the large number of subscribers on YouTube and there's ad placements and all kinds of things around you, uh, endorsements, sponsorships, there could be some money in it, not necessarily millions and billions of dollars, but enough to create it as a job in an area that you love and allows you the opportunity to further develop your, your uh, ability to share information about that passion of yours. Let's just take, um, Young man Ronald, who's um, does uh, jokes, or apparently has a joke the joke page on YouTube. And I'm sorry, Ronald, I haven't really watched your videos as much as I would have liked to. I just haven't had time. I do like to try and familiarize myself with other YouTubers, but I will watch. I promise you that. But <clears throat> let's just take Ronald for example. If his name stands true to what he's trying to do, which is tell jokes, if he builds up a large audience, then he's already got some subscribers, and he's already made some videos, that's just the beginning. Who knows how far it could go for him? It's just a matter of his commitment and his passion for it. If it's something he just does as a time-to-time -time hobby, that's great. If it's something he's like, I'd love to spend my life being a stand-up comedian and telling jokes and writing jokes and testing on people. Who knows what kind of a career he could, he could achieve. It's really up to him and his dedication and not listening to doubters. I'm not saying he has doubters in his life. 
but to not listening to doubt from anywhere, whether it be from television or news or whatever else. He can achieve whatever he wants to. You just have to decide what is, what is it your passion and how do you want it to be a part of your life? For some people, they want their passion just to be theirs and they don't want to share it with the rest of the world. They may make a video or something about it, but it doesn't mean they want that to be their career. They want to do it on the side, go to work, make their money, go home, make some jokes, find some jokes on the internet, and enjoy it, and that's their evening. It's just fun for them. It's their chill. For other people, it may be, I want to make a career out of this. It just has to be what you decide is important to you, and then go from there. It goes with anything. Your passion does not have to be your career, nor, so see, I'm a little different from some people in this area, a large number of people. So as an actor, filmmaker, I'm not looking for fame. Success, not fame. And what I want most of that is the means, meaning the money, the opportunity to do more of what I love, which is performing and making movies or stage plays, because I love them both. But creating and performing, those are very important things to me. And success within the industry that will allow me the opportunity and the financial means to do that is what I want in life. Fame is too fleeting. Really, it is. And you find out very quickly, as much as it is nice it is to be famous, I'm sure you could find countless numbers of celebrities who would tell you about people who they barely knew in their past or who they had bad experiences with in their past, who just showed up out of the blue once they became famous and said, hey, do you remember me? We were friends back in elementary school. You know, I'm working on this new project. Or, hey, I'd really like to be an actor. Could you give me an opportunity? I was like, who are you? <laughs> they have so much to deal with when you're famous. You are far more likely to, when you have that kind of income or celebrity, people are more likely to look for dirt on you because they want stories. They want things that they can talk about. Sometimes to your benefit, sometimes to your disadvantage. And fame is just a very, fame could be more hazardous than it can be beneficial. Yes, it can give you a platform to talk about issues that are important to you, but many times actors, filmmakers, should probably not be musicians, entertainers of any kind, should probably not on an intentional level publicly make their opinions known if they don't have any education on it. So it would be like me going up and talking about all the things that are wrong with this and that without really knowing the facts. So entertainers should do their job and try to appeal in most cases to a mass audience because you have the ability to make a positive impact there. And there's a difference with comedians. I want people to understand this too. And even with actors and anybody, but especially comedians. Comedians can do a lot of self-deprecating jokes about themselves or about their culture or whatever else. 
I don't think that this is a bad thing. I think it can be if you take it too far. But I think if you show that you're willing to laugh at yourself and that you don't take yourself so seriously about everything that you can sometimes break down walls with people and they go, man, that guy's funny. Well, that girl's funny. I never thought a woman could be a good comedian, but man, she's really funny. And she's not like over arrogant about herself. Man, maybe I should stop thinking that guys are the best comedians and women maybe are the best comedians or open my mind to more women comedians. So there's a large, there's, there's, there's an opportunity you have within media to really reach people. And I prefer not to be someone who reaches people without positive intention at the end. Meaning I don't want to use derogatory statements about people or genders or whatever else uh, without there being a message at the end like really when it's all comes down to what the same. I want there to be a um, I want us to try and bring each other together. And I think we have that opportunity, especially in media, but I don't think we should over advertise politics in it necessarily, especially if we are very limited on our education of it. Now, if you have a, if you're a media person and your hobby is politics and you know a lot about it or history or hockey or whatever else, and you can speak on it, uh, but there's subjects that are far less um, controversial than politics. <laughs> so, if you're, I, I know, for example, that um, Mike Myers is a very passionate hockey enthusiast. The guy who did, the guy who did Austin Powers. Uh, if you don't know that, his his name uh, and played all those unique characters. He's very passionate about hockey. There was, um, he was on SNL at one point and this person I knew who did radio interviewed him. I'm gonna say it was in Jefferson City, Missouri. I can't, I can't remember exactly what city it was in. But he was talking about when he had Mike Myers in the studio and interviewing him, that during the breaks of the show, all Myers would talk about was hockey because he was obsessed with it. Obsessed is the way he put it. I just think he was very, very passionate about it. Um, I'm not personally into hockey, but I'm not really into too many sports. I, I love uh, I love Olympic uh, efforts, but I like you know the adventurous ones like the high dive and the rings and the the, the floor work. I like that stuff uh, a great deal. Not a big fan of them, uh, you know, boxing or any of that sort of uh, Olympic style stuff. I think there's boxing in the Olympics, right? Wrestling. I was a wrestler for exactly one match in high school and I sucked. So um, <laughs> I remember being on the mat with this guy um, and he's trying to pin me. And we're kind of in this roll up. Thank you. We're in this roll up and I'm <laughs> holding on to him. And he's holding on to me and I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to get him off me and he's trying to pin me down and whatever else. And I remember I, I broke the rules because he was holding on to me and I kept trying to grab the mat, the edge of the mat, to pull myself away, to pull myself away because I didn't have the strength to do it otherwise. So um, anyway, um, uh, the answer to today's question, trivia wise, uh, was is um, Francis Scott Key and the name of the original piece was uh, defense of Fort M. Henry. So leave your comments uh, below. Make sure you put the answers, those two answers that I just gave you, in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to be a subscriber. Don't forget to like. And I will see you next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be well.